Hey guys, Seth with Skynet Drone Systems. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be covering part two in our series on mapping and modeling. If you missed part one, I'm gonna link that in the description below. That covers everything we've done so far to get us to this point in our project. Everything from creating the project to creating a flight route, executing the flight route, and then generating the model inside of DJI Flight Hub during post-production. Today, we're gonna to be building on all of that and continuing inside that project doing a 2D ortho mosaic map using the wide camera on the M3T, while at the same time, we're gonna be composing an IR or thermal map using the thermal camera on the M3T while it's executing the same flight mission. So when we're done, we're going to have two sets of data, one from the wide camera and one from the thermal that we're going to be able to add to our project so when it's over, we're going to be able to give our clients a fantastic deliverable product that they can use to address any possible issues. So stay tuned. Back in our project, this is the flight route we created last time, our oblique flight route. We're gonna exit out of Flight Hub 2, scroll over to DJI Pilot 2, select flight route. Now we're gonna create a copy of our original flight route and turn it into a 2D ortho mosaic thermal map. So we're gonna select our oblique flight route, scroll down to this icon at the bottom left, select that, click Sure. And then we're going to work with that copy to turn that into the thermal ortho mosaic. Now we're gonna select our oblique copy, then click Edit. We're gonna change the name to Ortho. Then we're going to scroll down and select our aircraft model. Make sure this is still all correct from the previous flight route. Then we're going to change our lens. We're going to switch it from wide to IR. Select OK. Now we're going to be working with an ortho collection. So we want to change it from oblique over to ortho. And we're going to have to adjust our altitude of our flight route to reflect the original flight route that we created with the 3D model. Scroll down and select Cloud Reconstruction. That's going to display the 2D thermal map live on our map while the aircraft is in flight performing our flight mission. Scroll down and select our speed for the flight. Then we're gonna scroll down to Advanced Settings and just make sure that all of our flight route parameters are correct in the way that we want them to be. Then we're gonna scroll over to the top left and save. Click the cloud icon and just make sure that photos is selected in the drop down menu so that all of our information and data is uploaded directly into our project without you manually have to do it later. Then select your ortho, click that, go through your pre-flight checks, select next, cloud reconstruction is on. We're gonna scroll down, upload our flight mission, then click start to launch the aircraft. green area that's being filled in is the live thermal map that's being uploaded into the project that anybody with access can view immediately while the aircraft is in flight. Here is the thermal ortho mosaic after the aircraft has completed its flight. Now we're gonna go back into our flight route and change the lens on the camera and take a wide ortho mosaic of the exact same area. So we're gonna switch the lens from IR to wide and then click OK. Then we're gonna scroll down and select route altitude and change our altitude to match the 2D thermal map we just created. Go through all of your other settings and make sure everything is correct before saving the flight route and then launching the aircraft to perform the final flight task.
Now that the aircraft has landed, we're going to go back into our project. And then we're going to scroll down to the left hand side where it says media files. And then we're going to go to our M3T file and select our church ortho route, select file name, and then start mapping. Then we're going to scroll over and select 2D mapping for our mapping type. And then scroll down and select OK. Once it's finished processing, we're going to select our new map. Scrolling down, you're going to see our 2D ortho mosaic, our 3D model, as well as our thermal ortho mosaic. And then we're going to overlay the two ortho mosaics we just made directly onto the map. Exit out of this screen and then scroll over to the left hand side to our map models. We're going to select that. And then we're going to be able to choose which models or maps we want displayed. For this, we're only going to be working with the ortho mosaics we just made. We're going to click on this icon for our model library and then we're going to select our 2d ortho mosaic then we're going to click the compare icon to overlay both of those ortho mosaics on the map using the menu on the lower right hand side and this slider we're going to be able to compare the thermal ortho mosaic to the wide ortho mosaic directly on the map this is going to allow us to use the thermal imaging to identify any problem areas and then the ortho mosaic with the wide lens to be able to determine its exact location on the structure. In addition to having the wide angle ortho mosaic and thermal ortho mosaic, you're also going to have the 3D model that we created in part one that you're going to be able to view or share with anybody associated with the project. You can also hide this model and scroll over and select 2D to view the two-dimensional ortho or the thermal ortho mosaic that you've just created. This is a different flight mission I performed at the same structure using another selection from the color palette menu. This was taken after a snowstorm. The time of day and conditions will affect the thermal imaging and temperature readings. Using the thermal ortho mosaic to identify the problem areas, we can zoom in on our model and take a look and see that these shingles are missing, causing the temperature variation identified by the FLIR camera. We can turn this model, zoom in, zoom out, and using that thermal ortho mosaic to identify any problem areas, we can find where that is exactly. This is a large thermal scan I did of a river and marsh area and on the edge of the scan you can see that there's two pieces of property that might be experiencing some kind of septic issue. Using a combination of the thermal and wide lenses you can locate and identify any potential problems. So that's it guys, I hope you really enjoyed our series on mapping and modeling. When all is said and done and you have these deliverables inside that project for an architect, building inspector, or anybody who is having an inspection done is going to benefit you tremendously to have all of that data in one centralized location to be able to present to them or anybody that's involved with the project. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We've got new videos coming out every week. Stay safe out there and we'll see you guys really soon.